Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Human Bahrami and today I'm going to show you how to create an energy orb using Type Flow system inside of 3D Studio Mac. So let's get started. So I created a basic ground plane and a sphere. And here's my Type Flow. I'm going to open my editor. I'm going to create a birth node and I'm going to put the start and end to zero. I want all of my particles be the first frame. I'm going to put the total numbers of particles to 500. Then I'm going to create a position object. So I want our particles to be around this sphere. So I'm going to pick my sphere and then I'm going to hide my sphere. So here it is. And then I'm going to send them out into another event. So send out. Okay, now I'm going to create a force node. and drag it this one. So I'm going to increase the noise a bit and play it. And you can see the particles all about to explode. So in order to fix that, I'm going to create a object bind modifier, object bind mode, sorry. And I'm going to select my sphere again. So we want them all those movements be around that sphere. So I'm going to hide that again. So, so now you can see there's no movement. So I'm going to go to the object bind and decrease the friction to 50%. And you can see the behavior of particles. So in order to have a good movement, I go back to the force and increase a little bit of the frequency. Just a touch. Now we have this beautiful movement. So let's just give it a shape. So because we're going to have a lot of particles, I'm going to use a low polygon shape. I'm going to use this uh, octadron, something like that. So I'm going to show display to geometry. Okay. Now I'm going to give a time test node. So we want them to explode after a certain frame. Let's add maybe a hundred. So I want them to, after hundred, new, something new happen. So I'm going to create a uh, find target node. Okay. So I'm going to create a bigger sphere. Okay. I'm going to tell it to not to be renderable and and here I'm in find target I'm going to pick my sphere so I'm going to hide this now if I play the animation you can see all the particles start to follow the sphere so in find target node I'm going to put the point to random now it just start to randomly explode to all around this my sphere and you can see it just passed through the floor. So in order to fix that, I'm going to add a collision operator and take my ground. And you can see it starts to collide with that. Okay. So you can see our main orb is just disappeared and that is not what we want. So here in my second event, I'm going to add a spawn node. And I'm going to, so let me just come to the first frame because this is a heavy note. I'm going to select travel distance. So I'm going to put in, so I'm going to set the step size to 0.3. Now you can see we have more of those particles emits all the time continuously. So I'm going to come into the timing and give it a frame. And I will say from zero to 40, you just have this amount of particles. So they stay, so the amount start to be stable. Okay, it's looking cool now. Let's just give these spawn particles to have the same uh, nodes here, because we want them to have that sphere shape all the time.
Okay. Okay. Now you can see we have the or and particles start in mid and we still have that or here, which is looking good. So now in this node, I'm going to add another spun because we want these particles have some kind of tail effect. So in order to do that, I add another spawn and I'm going to pick by distance, by travel distance. And I'm going to add another node here. Okay, I have to play it. You can see how it reacts and create this kind of tail effect, which is exactly what we want. So if you decrease the step size, we will have more of the accurate tail. It just depends on your machine that how it can handle many particles. So for this tutorial, I'm going to Put it to maybe 0 0.05 okay now i'm going to give that give them a life so this is the reason why i added a time test so i'm going to tell it to uh, disappear, disappear after maybe uh, 30 frames then i add a delete node So you can see the age of these tails are about 30 frames. Okay. So the speed of animation is just too high. I'm going to add a slow node to decrease the speed. So let me just play my animation again. Okay, so I'm going to add a time pass for parent. So I'm going to add a time pass for this part of our particles to, they just start to disappear after a certain amount of frame. Maybe 40 and give it a delete nil as well. So this is how it looks, pretty cool, right? So in order to give it a little bit look cooler for the tails, I can increase the age of the tail to be a little bit more, maybe 50, and add a scale operator and put it to timing continuously and give them a lower value. So the end of the tails start to get smaller and smaller. So the tails are going to look cooler. So maybe just give it a little bit, 97 maybe, 98. So in order to have more of these particles between them, we could just uh, decrease the step size. Let's get it to 0.2. All right, that's looking cool. So let's add collision to this part of the node and pick my ground. And as you can see, they collide with it. And let's just decrease the bounce to zero. I just don't want them to bounce. Okay, that's looking cool. So what I did here, I add a light materials for rendering. So don't forget to actually add mesh operator to all of your event to render them out so they be actually be visible in render so i used v-ray for rendering and what i just did was i created a basic v-ray light material and i give it to the typhlo system 
Now, if I just hit render, okay, here is the final look. You can still decrease the step size of the spawn particle to have them more linear look. And adding a little bit more particles depends on your hardware machine. And this is the end of the video. All right, if you like this video, please consider a subscribe button and like the video. And when I upload a new video, it will notify you. And I will see you again.